We're going to talk today about the West Nile virus and how it infects uh, songbirds in Atlanta and Chicago and how the infection patterns differ. Uh, and it's a very interesting story that was recently popularized in popular science and in other uh, popular journals. So first, let's just get over to um, what are the flavi viruses? Well, it's a very large group of species, including tick-borne viruses, uh, mosquito-borne viruses, that would include the West Nile virus, and would include also the yellow fever and um, the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, dengue and Zika viruses. And then the, uh, there's other viruses, all kinds, including yellow fever, which of course was uh, first discovered. Uh, the yellow fever virus was the first that was discovered. It was discovered by, uh, in fact, at that point, even they didn't even know uh, that yellow fever was carried by viruses. I mean, by mosquitoes being biting one person and to another. Did not even know that. And so when they discovered that, then they were able to characterize yellow fever. Okay, so back to uh, this. So this bird looks a little bit like it's shivering a bit. And it's kind of surprising that cardinals get bitten by mosquitoes. One wonders exactly where they're bitten. Are they bitten near the legs, on the legs, or in the eyes, or around the mouth? Don't know. Need to find out. Anyway, this is an article that's in Popular Science, and it's pretty interesting. Um, it says that um, even though the residents of Atlanta have, you know, a lot of mosquitoes, uh, and those mosquitoes are infected with West Nile virus, the residents of Atlanta may be protected by the way the mosquito bites the cardinals and how the virus replicates within the cardinals. So the, so the cardinals, uh, even though they, you know, mosquitoes bite them and they do get West Nile virus, the levels of virus are not high enough to get a good passage from the virus when bitten by another uh, mosquito. On the other hand, the American robins are very good at passing along the virus. And by keeping the West Nile virus away from these super spreaders, the beleaguered cardinals may tamp down transmission of the disease to people. So the West Nile virus has infected over 780,000 people here in the United States, many more across the globe. And yet there are surprisingly few human cases in Atlanta. And it can be explained by two factors. One is that, as I said, the cardinals do not produce a high enough levels of the virus. The viral titers are not high enough to actually efficiently uh, spread them from, uh, from bird to bird by mosquitoes. And what's even more interesting is that the mosquitoes, the mosquitoes seem to like to switch to the cardinals uh, in the middle of the, of the summer. And when you look at individual uh, mosquitoes that have already had a meal by biting a, a bird, you find that the uh, that the blood is actually from cardinals more frequently than the the robins. So they're actually two things: the um, the virus is poorly spread after a mosquito bites and infects a cardinal, and also the mosquitoes like to engorge themselves on blood from the cardinals. So these two things together have really suppressed the West Nile virus and the spreading of the West Nile virus in the Atlanta area. This is all work of Rebecca Levine, an epidemiologist and entomologist at the CDC, uh, and she has published this work in the American Journal of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene. Well, this brings up even other, even more important questions, which is how does this happen? Uh, and answers to these questions might help us understand more about what's going on with the other flavi viruses. Um, let me just show you this. Um, it's a little bit, it's going to be hard to see it, but it just gives you some idea of how many flavi viruses there are. 
and how they're related to yet other viruses. Well, here's dengue fever, and dengue fever has uh, now five serotypes, so they may be individually here on this little spiral. Uh, the closer they are together, the closer the species are related in terms of DNA sequences. Here is yellow, to, yellow fever, the first vi virus in this family that was discovered. And there is a good vaccine for uh, yellow fever, which is interesting in terms of vaccine development. And I don't know whether you probably cannot see it, but here is dengue. Here is an, un I don't know how to even pronounce this virus, but it's been known. And then next to that is Zika. So Zika is fairly closely related to dengue viruses. And yet there are some major differences because as you get over here to, Z to, um, to Zika, you're getting closer to these viruses that have encephalitic in their name, like the Japan encephalitic virus. And the West Nile virus is also probably here somewhere. Let's see, where is it? Well, here it is up here, I think. Um, anyway, the West Nile virus and the Japanese uh, encephalitic virus have, when they have bad effects, often the uh, viral infections are not really dangerous. Uh, the first, especially in dengue, the first viral infection is not dangerous. It's the second of a different serotype that can lead to dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue septic shock uh, syndromes, which can be deadly. In other words, out of the hundreds of millions of people in the world who are infected with dengue each year, uh, the, um, the, the number of people who get the, the, uh, you know, the, the, the serious, uh, side effects are, um, <clears throat> are, it's about 50,000, but it's really quite a serious disease, especially since these cases are occurring in, um, places maybe that don't have as much, uh, uh, good medical care as you might get here in the United States. So the other thing to talk about is the fact that, um, uh, there is uh, evidence that um, we might be able to make a virus, and the way we're going to make it, I hope, we hope, is um, by um, uh, you know coming up with a uh, vaccine that's based upon. So the vaccines are based upon the yellow fever. This vaccine was introduced in 1937, and it produced dramatic effects on the epidemic activity. Now this particular vaccine, the idea of it is that you want to decrease the spread of the virus from person to person. So, um, and so, you know, you know it's, it's, so this was a, uh, but other viruses, I mean, vaccines have been based upon the Japanese encephalitic virus, which is, as its name suggests, has been found largely in Japan, but does there are related viruses, including the West Nile virus, um, which are related to this Japanese encephalitic virus. And then there's tick-borne encephalitic viruses. And so these um, inactivated virus um, vaccines have been used. And because of this, if you watch that 60-minute uh segment on the um, Zika virus, you'll no notice that uh, the director of the Infectious uh, Disease Division of NIH was talking about modifying the yellow fever or a yellow fever vaccine by putting in the Zika sequences into that. However, in general, the uh, success of vaccines in this field, especially the dengue uh, vaccines, have been fairly difficult to make and make a vaccine that doesn't have uh, side effects, especially when you're infected with a different serotype. Uh, such a dengue vaccine is only licensed in Japan, in um, Mexico and a few other countries, not in the United States so far. Back to the Cardinals. It's interesting that, um, that this kind of micro evolution is going on between the Cardinals and the mosquitoes and the virus. You wonder what, why does the mosquito even allow, I mean, eventually you would think maybe the mosquito would do better if it didn't have a viral infection that it was transmitting to its host. For one thing, it can kill off its host and then not have a, a good, you know, good source of meals. And this is, 
this brings up a topic that's really important, which is how do we understand more about the immune response? For example, if we get a serum sample from a cardinal, that seems to be what they're doing in the study, is getting a blood sample. And of course, we'd ideally, we'd like to do these experiments with smallest amount of blood possible. Um, what about the immune response? Is that the explanation? Does the cardinal mount a really good immune response and the robin doesn't? Is that what's going on? And then another concern, which is a patriotic concern, is that the the bald eagles, you know, the bald eagles, America's patriotic animal symbol, is also being killed by West Nile virus, as are other raptors. And in fact, for example, a report from Germany suggests that it's very difficult to vaccinate uh, falcons with the existing uh, veterinary uh, West Nile virus uh, vaccines. So we really need more information on the immune response. And in fact, you would say it's one of the last few frontiers in the advances of what is called genomics. Genomics is understanding the genes in the individual species that was used to make that uh, genealogy I showed you earlier. But in the case of uh, the immune response, we'd like to catalog all the immune responding cells in the immune response and understand more about how they suppress the virus or in some cases activate the virus. That's the problem with dengue fever. The second infection actually um, is a dysfunction in the immune system that causes that infection to be much more severe. So uh, I'm trying to get a, a start on this. Um, I would like to start a biotech company and one of the the focuses of the biotech company is to is to come up with ways of analyzing more accurately the immune response to compare those who have severe complications to those who don't and see if we can understand more about what's going on in these flavivirus uh, infections including Zika. So anyway if you would like to help me in this be, feel free to um, send me a email at zika.update at gmail.com and of course any contributions would be welcome. You have to know though that I'm planning to start a for-profit biotech company and therefore any such contributions would not be tax deductible. Anyway, uh, and if you uh, and indicate in your email whether you would like for me to talk to you back on, t uh, on a telephone call. And if you're a scientist, uh, I'd like to uh, e email back some articles that we might find uh, of interest talking about, or even if you're an advanced science student, pre-med student, or any other kind of science student, please feel free to, to email me and we may uh, be able to form a dialogue uh, uh, and discuss the current issues in this field. Thank you so much for your attention and please subscribe to my channel and look at my other videos that are available. Um, I'm trying to improve the quality of these and any comments you send me by email would really be helpful along those lines. Bye now.